good morning. I'm excited to be hosting Coffee with Bob today. Yesterday, Bob talked about National Loving Day on June 12th, a day that is been celebrating and commemorating the work and the love of Richard and Mildred Loving. They were a couple that were married in the 1950s and the state of Virginia arrested them because they were of two different races. Richard was a white person and Mildred was African-American and Native American. And at that time, the state of Virginia had a law against that. Well, they would appeal the law. It went uh, completely to the Supreme Court, which ruled that Basically, the government had no right to discriminate uh, against people of different skin colors marrying one another. Mildred would say later on in her life that she felt blessed to be able to marry the man that she loved and that it was God's work, that the government really didn't have any business discriminating against her from marrying the man that she loved. Well, all of that persecution they faced was based solely on the color of her skin. And that has been a, a sad strain throughout our country's history. Certainly we've made progress, but I think we all know that we have a ways to go before we are truly living out God's dream for our society, where all are treated as children of God and recognized as such. I wanna encourage you to read the book that I've been reading, Just Mercy. It's written by Brian Stevenson, who founded the Equal Justice Initiative. In the 1980s, he started this foundation to represent people of color, African Americans in Alabama, who had been wrongfully convicted or denied legal representation for their criminal trials. Now there's a movie based on the book that really features uh, the true story of Walter McMillan, who was wrongfully convicted of murder and awaiting his execution on death row. Brian Stevenson took his case and would eventually win his freedom. He would be, Walter was set free, but it's important to read this story and just be aware of the injustices that so many people have had to face and still are facing. For Walter McMillan, he was accused of murdering a teenage girl who was white, even though his alibi was as strong as you can imagine. He was around a dozen people who were ready to testify uh, for him that they were with him all morning long when the murder happened. And one of them was a police officer. Well, one of Walter's crimes, if you will, it wasn't a crime. It may have been a poor decision on his part, but Walter was married to an African-American woman, but he had an affair with a white woman. And that didn't go over very well in the town where he lived. And it led to uh, people being ready to throw him in prison for the murder he didn't convict, he can, didn't commit. As I mentioned, Brian Stevenson won his freedom, but one of the moving stories in the book happened when Walter was awaiting his execution on death row and Brian had been with him all day long, visiting with him about the case. And he went from the prison to meet with Walter's family. And he got to his wife's home and he visited with Walter's wife, the, the trial and Walter's situation and the public re 
veal of the affair had really taken a toll on her, but she loved her husband and knew of his innocence. Well, after they visited a while, she said, the family's really looking forward to meeting with you. And Brian was kind of taken aback because he still had a two hour drive to get home. And he thought he was meeting with um, Walter's wife and several family members. But they said there was another gathering that was going to take place. And so they drove Brian out to this place way out in the country to this trailer that was filled with people standing room only and the only place to sit was a couch that they had left open for Brian and Walter's wife to sit and as the people uh, allowed Brian in and they waited for him to kind of catch his breath they all started applauding him because they were so grateful for him taking Walter's case and over the next several hours they all asked questions and started uh, listening to Brian's thoughts about the case. One thing that really struck me was the fact that Brian figured out that these weren't all his relatives. Many of them were from the larger community, but they were so hurt by the fact they knew that Walter was innocent and yet he was uh, convicted and sentenced to death despite his innocence that it shook them to the core. And so people of the larger community were there to lend their support and express their grief. As I mentioned, Walter was let out of prison and, and freed and his innocence was proven. But I couldn't help think about the larger community that showed up. It reminded me of the famous quote, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. When we hear of people who are wrongfully convicted, when we hear of people who are denied justice, it should shake us to the core, whether or not we're family with them, whether or not we know them, because injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are part of that larger community and we should gather together and demand justice for all because they are our neighbors. No matter the color of their skin, whether they're our relatives, they are our neighbors and we are called to love our neighbor, no exception. I hope you have a great day.